I think we're going to get started. Uh, we may, and we'll at least get through call to the audience, and then we may take another break if Supervisor Valadez hasn't arrived. And with that, I want to call to order the January 2nd meeting of the Pima County Board of Supervisors. This is our first meeting of the year. Welcome to all of you who are here. And as a point of personal privilege, um, well, actually, let's do roll call, and then I'll do a point of personal privilege. Roll call. Supervisor Christie? Here. Supervisor Elias? Presente. Supervisor Miller? Here. Supervisor Valadez? Chair Bronson? Here. Let the record reflect that Supervisor Valadez is absent. All other members are present. All right. Um, before we stand for the um, invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance, um, I want to, oh, he made it. Let the record show that Supervisor Valadez is present now. Uh, I want to just take a moment of personal privilege. Uh, over this past weekend, uh, Mayor Rothschild's father um, passed away. Uh, let's keep uh, Mayor Rothschild and his family in our thoughts and prayers, and certainly we send our condolences to the family. And now we'll have the invocation to be offered by Reverend Robert Hendrickson, St. Philip's in the Hills Episcopal Church, with the Pledge of Allegiance to follow, led by Supervisor Christie. Please rise. I think ultimately our lives are not our own, and as we dedicate ourselves faithfully to work on behalf of others, uh, let us pray. Almighty God, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of this life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Amen. Please join me. And do we have pause for pause? Ms. Lesher, do we have? No, no pause for pause. Okay, then let's move on to call to the public. And I want to, Ms. Lesher, you may want to say a few words. I mean, we did our grand opening on the 28th, and we have our new facility up and running. Thank you, Madam Chair, yes, and thanks to all of you who were there. We did uh, have a ribbon cutting on the first phase of the new animal care facility, and we encourage everyone to go out and take a look. It is at um, uh, the first about 45,000 square feet are finished, and it's a terrific new facility and uh, a lot of happy dogs and cats out there. We had some great times during the holidays, and thanks so much for being part of that uh, presentation. It really is an amazing facility, and uh, if you get a chance, you want to volunteer your time to walk a dog or pet a cat, or just come visit the new facility, um, I think you'll be very, very pleased with, our, with how our bond money was spent. And with that, we're going to move to call to the audience. I would, you have three minutes. I ask that you abide by the rules of civility. Roger, score. Board members, we want to be civil. My uh, brother-in-law once told me I was like the wild mustangs. They keep coming in and kicking down our fences. And he goes, well, he goes, I have respect for them. He goes, we're castrating the rest of them next week. So when it comes to civility, how civil should we be? When you spend over 15 million of our tax money on worldview, which I don't know who in their right mind would ever pay $75,000 to go up in a balloon. What they did was so bad that the local media had to cover for them. They tried to act like it was a classified operation 
Well, I know it wasn't a military operation, so how could it be classified? Why would you go up in a balloon that they can't even tell you if it was hydrogen in the balloon? Well, of course it was hydrogen. Hydrogen explodes. So you've lost that money. But to recover it, what we do is we go to the Affordable Care Act, and we get a clause in there that they'll pay for assisted suicide. So that way, when you pay the $75,000, you get your suicide, your cremation, and your ashes spread all in one issue. They say that two people went in because they had hearing damage. So they had to go in and get checked up, checked on. Then after that, they say there is no injuries. Well, what do they classify as an injury? People working at Raytheon where they have explosive missiles right next door, had ceiling tiles coming down, and I know some of them, and they got a pretty good scare. Neighboring houses had windows broke out. This is all on county property. How much liability are you putting taxpayers at by allowing these people who aren't really capable of doing the job they're trying to do? They called this a success. They said it was a successful test. Well, what if it wasn't successful? What if it re really went bad? How many people would be dead? How much damage would be done? I mean, if they blow up a balloon, break windows, uh, knock ceiling tiles out, have people get injured on site, what happens when this thing has a disaster out there? So, I mean, I think this is the best we can work out of there, is assisted suicide. Please take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Albert Lannon. My name is Albert Lennon. I live in Picture Rocks. <clears throat> I'm here to lodge a formal complaint pursuant to the Pima County Regulatory Bill of Rights, wherein persons adversely affected by district statements that implement, interpret, or prescribe law or policy may seek redress. Since the complaint is against the county administrators, Offie and Charles Huckleberry, it would be inappropriate to direct the complaint to him, so it is addressed to the chair of the Pima County Board of Supervisors, since the board has ultimate authority for the affairs of the county and the county administrator reports to and acts under its direction. County policy as expressed in resolution 2007-343, quote, opposes the construction of any new highways in or around the county that have the stated purpose of bypassing the existing Interstate 10, as it is believed that the environmental, historic, archeological, and urban form impacts could not be adequately mitigated, end quote. The resolution specifically discusses the Avra Valley as worthy of protection. The county administrator and his staff for at least five years have ignored, violated, mis- and reinterpreted 2007-343, making new county policy not adopted by this board without notice or public discussion in favor of an Avra Valley route for a proposed Interstate 11. Such contrary actions adversely affect me, as a highway would adversely affect thousands of others with air, noise, and light pollution, wildlife disruption, and loss of tourist revenues to be made up from our tax dollars. Pima County appearing to be in favor of it has resulted in the Avra Valley route being one of only two to remain on the table in ADOT's Tier 1 Environmental Impact Statement study. Using county resources to create and publish maps and other support documents adversely affects me by misusing my tax dollars. Losing the present peaceful enjoyment of Saguaro National Park, Tucson Mountain Park, the Desert Museum, Kitt Peak, and Ironwood Forest will adversely affect me. Ignoring the will of the voters who rejected the Sonoran Corridor, originally known on county maps as part of I-11, adversely affects me by telling me my vote in the bond election means nothing, so why bother voting? 
That bypass is convoluted to give a planned Diamond Ventures development a free access highway in violation of Pima County personnel rules of conduct. That also adversely affects me by misspending my tax dollars, as well as demonstrating that the rule of law does not apply to the county administrator's office. I close by noting that about 90% of over 3,000 comments from the public, your constituents, to ADOT this past summer opposed any Avra Valley I-11, and less than one half of 1% favored it. Citations and evidence are in the formal complaint. I look forward to your response within the required 15 business days. Thank you. Um, just for clarification, have you filed an official claim? That's my, you got it. Then that's not, then you need to submit that. This is your official? Yes. Okay, then you need to submit that to the clerk. I did give it to the clerk. Oh, you've got it? Okay. I All right. Copies for, with copies for Okay, everybody. great. That, thank you. Jerry Odebonin. Madam Chairman and Board of Supervisors, my name is Jerry Ottoboni. I live in Merrill Oil Valley. I thought it shocking this ripoff of the taxpayers. We watched the Arizona Daily Independence video of a giant fireball explosion across the sky. World Vision really used hydrogen gas instead of helium in their balloon, putting the taxpayers on the hook for their bad behavior. Why did we build Worldview in the buffer zone that was a protection for Raytheon? I think uh, we paid something for somebody's friends for that property. Uh, that shocking explosion blew the tiles onto the heads of Raytheon employees one mile away. Uh, also, the airport is approximately one mile away. Now, apparently a dangerous airport to fly out of. Many people told me from now on they will shuttle up to Phoenix. Again, you are wasting taxpayers' dollars for liability so your cronies get paid. It's only a matter of time that Pima County gets sued for world use reckless behavior, and we the taxpayers will be forced to pay again for worldview. Unbelievable. Thank God for Arizona Daily Independent, as the rest of the Tucson fake news tried to cover it up until Arizona Daily Independent exposed the truth by showing the video. I expect Pima County to investigate the hydrogen explosion because the taxpayer should not be held liable for real use recklessness. Do they even know what they're doing? Everyone needs to go online and Google Arizona Daily Independent and search worldview and worldview explosion to learn the truth. And how Worldview has ripped off the taxpayers and caused a dangerous scenario. Obviously, they didn't pay attention in history class about the Hindenburg disaster due to hydrogen gas in 1937. Thank you. Keith von Heineken. Good morning, Pima County. My name is Keith Van Heinigan, and I'm here to speak, as many are, about corruption here in Pima County. See, we've had this long-term Democrat majority, plus one old Republican wannabe, and Chuck Huckleberry, the master of all roads. Well, why do our roads look the way they do, Chuck? See, people out here in the world, in World One, we've been looking at the budget for the last 10 years hard. And along with a little help from Ali Miller, some other people, we've found hundreds of millions of dollars in waste, fraud, abuse, nepotism, graft. Anybody say wastewater lately? And we wonder why we're one of the poorest counties in the entire country. 
Then we have the issue with worldview, which is a tragedy. See, I go back, my grandfather went back to pre-NASA days. He built bombers in World War II. Then he went to NACA, then he went to NASA. His last project was the space shuttle. On the other side of the family, it's the military and national security. National security states this, look it up, anything with one one thousandth the explosive power of a nuclear weapon should be looked at as a terrorist event if outside the lines of a said business. Do they in fact make hydrogen bombs? Because that's what was exploded an improvised explosive device. The people involved, Mark Kelly, Miss Pointer, Mr. McCallum, Chuck Huckleberry, Dr. Stern, formerly of NASA, need to be investigated. It's over $15 million wasted. We're now the laughing stock of the entire country. I'm glad I spent my Christmas in Albuquerque. It was much more sane. And please don't compare yourselves to that county, because they've got you going away. And how close is that really to Raytheon and missiles and planes at the airport? Thank how you much does it expired. tether away? Have a nice day. Christopher Cole. Good morning. I hope your holidays were nice. My name is Christopher Cole, and I am no longer the first vice chair of the Pima County Libertarian Party. I am the chairman. Scott Stewart had to resign due to ill health. I'm also going to talk about worldview for a moment. If a hydrogen balloon blowing up halfway through a flight is a success, I'd hate to see what a failure is. Worldview is not going to make it. We all know that multimillionaires are not going to pay huge amounts of money so that they can fall from 100,000 feet to their death. But the failure of worldview can have one positive, one positive outcome. The husband of Gabrielle Giffords can use his contacts in NASA and maybe we can start making lunar rovers here in Pima County because those are going to be the only sort of vehicle that's going to be able to drive on Pima County streets and roads. You can whine all you want about what the legislature did or didn't do, but a real leader doesn't whine. You can't control the legislature. You can try and influence them, but you cannot control them. A real leader will pick up the slack and get the job done. Your job is the infrastructure. And if you get the roads and all of the other infrastructure up and running properly, that will bring more jobs than Worldview did and there'll be longer lasting jobs. I doubt Worldview is going to last another two years. And even if no jobs come in because everybody is so happy with the roads and the sewers and so forth, at least they're not going to be fleeing. Fix the roads. Right now you're saddled with an office building that when Worldview <coughs> goes away, is going to be in competition with all of the other empty office buildings in Pima County. The equipment, maybe you can sell for pennies on the dollar. The launch pad, maybe you can turn that into a 
outdoor square dance festival location. Worldview is a failure. The roads are a failure. Be leaders. Thank you. Fix the roads. Your time Thank has you. expired. Russell Trask. Happy New Year. New Year brings new uh, thinking and hope and opportunities to talk about where our money's being spent, where our money's not being spent. These are great things for us, especially standing on this side. Um, The truth will set you free, and you will be free indeed. Amen. Edward Siza. I don't know if that was a cell phone, but just a reminder to everybody, please mute your cell phones while uh, we're in session. Thank you. It might have been. But sometimes I, there's one little sound on mine that an alert sound that sounds like that. So, <laughs> Edward, go ahead. Sorry, Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Huckleberry, welcome to 2018. It's a brand new year, so I want to start things off by talking about the same old roads and about our county budget. Specifically today, I want to talk about one woman's outsized role in our county budget woes. I don't think she's here this morning, but most of us know her name. I'm of course referring to our county attorney, Barbara Wall. Nearly a quarter of our county budget is devoted to legal and jail systems. At a time when the state faces, or claims to face, significant budget shortfalls, the Department of Corrections is the only state department that has seen substantial funding increases over the past decade. This directly impacts us through nearly $40 million in court and legal related costs shifted on to Pena County, according to Mr. Huckleberry's budget memoranda as well as through millions more dollars in state shared HERF revenues that have been appropriated for DPS and DOC related expenses at the expense of our county roads. Why is it that over 1% of Arizona's adult population is currently behind bars, either at the DOC or in local jails, a higher percentage even than China? Why is it that, according to a piece written by Pima Public Defender Joel Feynman, did Ms. Lawal decide to charge one man accused of petty theft with 24 counts of cr the crime, carrying a maximum prison sentence of 60 years. 60 years for someone with no priors. I know first degree murders in 40 years. Shooting at cops, 25. Rape, 20. 60 years for an act of petty theft. At an average cost per prisoner in the state of Arizona, Ms. Lawal's one act of appearing tough on crime was prepared to ca cost state and county taxpayers nearly $1.6 million. Pima County's share of the DOC budget based on prisoners is about $126 million. I'm not saying all this money is wasted and some of it's going to put some really bad people locked away for a very long time. But I think it's worth asking why we're spending so much money on this prison state. I think it's worth asking why Supervisors Christy and Miller, Miller think it's okay to spend our public taxpayers' dollars helping CCA, Geo Group, and other for-profit prison companies make money at our expense. They reaffirmed this with their vote at the last meeting. I just want to say, $126 million per year sure would go a long way towards fixing those blankety-blank roads. Thank you. Thank you. Michael McGrath. Good morning, I'm Michael McGrath. I'm counsel for the Rialto Theater Foundation. With me today is Curtis McCrary, the executive director. I'd like to thank the board for its continued examination of the 2016 and 2017 taxes that have been assessed and not <coughs> rebated against the theater. Uh, I want to reiterate what I told you on the 19th of December. I will continue to be available, as will our staff, to work with your legal counsel or the folks at the county assessor's office. I received, after I appeared before you on the 19th, a workup, again from the assessor's office, 
in which they took the position that we were not qualified substantively for a tax deduction. There can be no doubt amongst reasonable people that the theater falls within the exempt use statute provided by the state legislature. And the assessor's suggestion that we don't own the property is belied by the actual records of the county. I know you have a couple of procedural matters. First, you'll discuss with counsel whether you'll waive the attorney-client privilege and get substantively to our motion to abate taxes. I would just like to say to you, I have had the opportunity to speak a few times with Mr. Flagg. We have provided him the documents that I believe establishes beyond doubt that we have timely filed with the Board of Supervisors an abatement request for both 16 and 17. And if you're satisfied with that, we're happy to either return to a discussion with the assessor or have you abate the taxes as the statute provides you can do. Uh, but I'd like to suggest to you when the assessor tells you on December 18th that we don't own the property or the theater is not entitled to an exemption, it really is beyond, um, I think, r rational consideration of the issue. Again, thank you for your continued look at this. Our 100 person, 600 member uh, not for profit is very much dependent upon our cash flow to continue to program and pay our 100 plus employees. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Bakel. <clears throat> Madam Chair, members of the board, Mr. Huck Mr. Huckleberry, my name is Brian Bickle. I'm a resident of unincorporated Pima County. Brand new year, unfortunately, same old problems. Uh, just a few facts that I'd like to share with you and with the gallery as relates to roads and funds available for roads repair. In fiscal year 06-07, HRF payments from the state treasurer to the Pima County treasurer were just over $44 million. VLT payments in that same period of time were just over $41 million, which in theory says we have just about $85 million a year to <coughs> fix our roads. Unfortunately, according to statute, that VLT payment is an 80-20 split with 80% going into the general fund and 20% going into the HERF portion, which means about $8 million of that $41 million went into road repair. So we actually have $52 million, not $85 million. In FY16-17, we got $45 million for HERF, and we got $42 million for VLT. And with that same 80-20 split, about $8 million went into road repair. So we actually have about $53 million for road repair. Of that 53 million, 19 million goes to debt service. You had nothing to do with that. We did that to ourselves. That's the 1997 bond issue that the voters put into place. And the only people currently sitting on the dais that could have had anything to do with that are Chair Bronson and Mr. Huckleberry. Nobody else was on the board when that happened. In addition to that, we have a half cent <coughs> sales tax that funds the RTA. Over the past 10 years, between the bond issue and the RTA, we've put, on average, $100 million worth of new infrastructure into service in Pima County, with absolutely no provision to fund for repair of that. And as you can see, we're not getting any more HERF money now than we did 10 years ago. So we keep adding to the roads that we have to maintain without coming up with a provision to repair them. As we get ready to look at continued funding of the RTA, or a voter approved extension of the RTA, please make sure we include ongoing repair in that legislation as opposed to just building new infrastructure that we have no means to pay for upkeep on. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That concludes our call to the public. Um, and we do have one change to the uh, agenda, and that's the regular agenda, page five, item 18 real property grant of easement um, the item should also include the following this item requires a unanimous vote of approval by the board of supervisors if there are no objections we'll so amend the agenda hearing no objections the agenda is amended 
Uh, that brings us now to the Board of Coop. There are no executive session items. There are no special proclamations. This is an interesting way to start the new year. So we're going to move immediately into Board of Supervisors sitting as other boards. The Flood Control District Board, items 6 and 7. What's the pleasure of the board on these items? Madam Chair, I'd like to divide the question. They're two separate items. Okay, um, item six, riparian habitat mitigation. I'll move the item. Second. second. Motion and a second. Objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Item seven, uh, Diablo Village 2018 development agreement and sales agreement. This is related to agendas items number 16 and 17 on the consent. Uh, is related to agenda items number 16 and 17 and consent calendar item number 19. I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second. Objections? Madam Chair. Supervisor Miller. Um, I had to do a lot of reading on this one. Um, and what I found on this is kind of disturbing. Um, we are now part of these, um, we're Back in 2007, this, le this developer, which is uh, Diablo Village Partners and Title Security, Security Agent is the trustee, conveyed to Pima County about 118 acres, is my understanding, the west lots. And we con they conveyed it to us for the taxes and fee fees owed to the county for roughly 1.5 million. And the, there are several issues on this, and now they want to give us back four acres, or they want us to convey back to them four acres, of which they had paid $29,250 to, to excavate some fill material out of that particular area. The uh, flood district has said this appraised value for these four acres is 25000 so if I take and apply that, and I, I understand times are different, but this was back in 2007. The land values were a little different back then. But we paid roughly 1.5 million, and uh, if you take that in today's value, it's about 770,000. And we want to convey that back to them and give them credit for the $29,250 that they paid for excavation material. And also, so it's, it's basically a, a swap, but we're also crediting them for $4,250, or excuse me, yeah, $4,250 of credit so that they can use that toward any payment of fees due to the county. Um, we already paid for this land once, <laughs> and now we're giving it back to them. And uh, there's a lot of issues with this um, as I look through it. Um, we're gonna, they're gonna build a uh, basin and we're gonna, we have these 114 acres left that we're gonna build a park on, is that correct? Mr. Huckleberry? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, and I think um, what's missing in this discussion is that the two roadways uh, and the conveyance back for the right of way for the roadways they were originally platted. The developer is going to build them at his own cost, and those basically become the primary access points to a new regional park. Those two roadways. Correct. Yeah, they're giving those back to Pima County. Is that correct? Conveying them back. They're being dedicated back after the roads are improved. Okay. Um, and then as I. I Bottom line, as I look through this, I just feel like uh, this developer is getting a park built for free. Other developers don't get it. Um, they have to pay for their own. And um, so I'm going to object to this. And I do note that these, these are some roads in these subdivision are going to be milled and filled as a result of the vote a few weeks ago on roads when other districts weren't allowed to do milling and filling. So I, I feel like this is a whole lot of preferential treatment going on for these two individuals, and I'm going to vote no. Is there any other discussion? I'll call the question. Any objections? I object. 
One objection. Any further objections? Hearing none, motion carries four to one. <coughs> Moving on to the Board of Supervisors sitting as a library district board. Item eight is an acceptance of a grant. Uh, and I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to the consent calendar. What's the pleasure of the board? Would anybody like to divide the question? Supervisor Miller. I would like to divide the question and vote on items three, five, six, and seven separately. Three, five, six, and seven. Thank you. I'll move Madam the Chair. remainder of consent. Sorry. Motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Item three, I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second. Supervisor Miller. I object. Any further objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to item five, McMahon and Associates, Design Services. I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second. Supervisor Miller. Um, Madam Chair, I object to this because this is $1.5 million to um, do the regional tournament complex at Kino Sports uh, Complex. And this is, uh, these were certificates of participation. And uh, if we're going to issue certificates of participation, I believe they should go to Rhodes. I object as well. Any further objections? Any further discussion? Hearing none, motion carries three to two. Moving on to item six, a purchase order, Arizona Wastewater Industries. I'll move the item. Sir. Madam Chair, um, the question I had on this, and I don't know if anyone here can answer um, this question, but I noted that this truck is 411000 and then it says the sales tax, and, and this is being purchased in Phoenix, 8.6% on the first 10000 and 8.3% on the remaining balance. Um, I got an unofficial answer for someone over the weekend that it was uh, some sort of a carve-out for the car dealers on sales tax in Phoenix. Is that correct, or does anyone know? Mr. Huckleberry? Any, Mr. Burke? Uh, it, it, yeah, it's Madam Chair, I, uh, I don't know. We can certainly find out, but it's I such can, a I small amount. I can find amount. out. I yeah. know that there's another carve out that just occurred in Pinal County, Pinal that's County under for litigation. the RTA. Yeah. 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 I was just curious if anyone knew that. Otherwise, I don't object to this item. Okay, and if we actually, I'd like if we can in, um, investigate that and then get the information to all the board members. If there are no objections, motion carries. Um, moving on to seven. This is courtesy Chevrolet. I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second. Supervisor Miller. Um, Madam Chair, again, I can approve uh, 706000 for 20 electric vehicles when our roads are in such ill repair. Thank you. I object as well. Two objections. Any further objections? Hearing none, motion carries three to two. Moves us back to the regular agenda. With the Board of Supervisors sitting as the Board of Scoop Supervisors, items 10 A and B. This is a discussion whether or whether or not to re, um, to waive attorney client, client privilege regarding the Rialto Theater petition. Um, what's the pleasure of the board on these on this? Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I'll move uh, item A to waive the attorney client privilege. For item A only? Just, uh, just item A only, just a point. Okay, I will second that motion. Any discussion? Any objection? Madam Chair. Supervisor Miller. Um, when you waive the attorney client privilege, is that our discussion in executive session? No. Or was Where it the. It's the. Um, it, it doesn't refer to any memorandum. It's the legal advice that I think, did you put that in writing? As I re Madam I, Chair, no, but the waiver of attorney-client privilege would allow us to have a discussion in public about the same issues not subject to attorney-client privilege. 
but it doesn't waive what we discussed in executive mm -hmm. session. I mean, the statute protects the discussion in executive session, but the board could vote to waive the privilege to allow us to discuss the same, same issues in public. Okay, I've just never dealt with this before. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the floor to waive. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Item B, we have waived the privilege regarding the legal advice. Um, and I had asked that we put this on because I am still confused uh, receiving different information from the um, uh, folks at the Rialto and then from uh, the county assessor. Um, and as I understood from the county attorney, and correct me if I'm wrong, you think there is a remedy for at least one of those tax years that does not include the Board of Supervisors? Madam Chair, there are um, a number of different ways a taxpayer can bring cha a challenge to an exemption determination. Um, there, it's conceivable that the error correction statutes would provide another means of uh, going back to 2017 or 2016, that does, I, I, as I understand it, those don't go through the board. I'm not an expert on that process, but I believe that process starts with the assessor's office. Um, the, pr the process being implemented here is a different statute which deals with the board's ability to forgive the failure to comply with statutory requirements in seeking an exemption. Madam Chair. Supervisor Madam Miller. Miller. Um, Madam Chair, may I ask the county attorney to explain the error correction statute or give us a... I'm not, it looks like he's not comfortable doing it, but well, I will ask. Ma Madam Chair, Supervisor Miller, I'm not a tax expert, so okay. uh, I'll concede that right away. And, and the tax statutes are pretty Byzantine. Right. Um, but my understanding is that the error correction process allows you to go back to prior tax years, and the courts have said that under certain circumstances, that can allow you to bring up issues like exemptions on the premise that you're correcting a past error in the in the tax rules. Okay. Um, as far as the specifics of the process, I believe it starts with the assessor, and I'd be hesitant to go any further than that because I, it's just not my area of expertise. All right. Ma Madam Chair. Supervisor Chris. I have a question again to uh, County Attorney. There's been talk in past instances about similar situations that the assessor would not recognize the legitimacy of the board, board's authority to waive any exemptions or to allow for exemptions. Uh, should, should we, as a board, decide to uh, uh, accept the foundation's petition for waiver, do you anticipate that this could be uh, protested by the county assessor? Madam Chair, Supervisor Christie, I don't want to speak for the assessor, obviously. It is my understanding that the assessor has taken the position that uh, only the assessor can determine whether a property is exempt. And so these statutes, the, particularly the one that's at issue here is 4211-153. Um, the argument, as I understand it, is that the, the taxpayer has to be exempt in order to have the waiver uh, of the statutory process forgiven. And it's, a, it's the assessor's interpretation, as I understand it, and I think it's a reasonable reading of the statute, that the board doesn't get to make that de determination of whether the property is exempt to begin with, that that determination right. has to be made by the assessor. Um, there's an argument to the contrary under the statute, um, but, but that's my understanding of what the assessor's position is. And just to follow up on Supervisor Christie's question, I had the same question if the board you said there's a reasonable there there could be another interpretation that would allow the board um were the board to vote for the to waive uh i mean to vote for the exemption or to grant the petition uh what is the risk uh exposure the liability the county the county assessor would then sue us Madam Chair, that's cert I, I think that's a possible outcome. I don't, again, I don't want to speak for the assessor and what he would do in a particular circumstance, but um, based you, but on Do you believe he has the ability to sue us should he, should he disagree with our actions? Madam Chair, I think that the assessor could certainly file a suit. The question would be whether he has standing to um, bring a suit and, and file against the board. Um, 
uh, no court has addressed that under this statute to my understanding um, so uh, it, it's hard to it's hard to give an answer any better than really a, a coin flip on that madam, madam chair go ahead oh, okay. madam chair if um, we decided as a board to uh, grant the, the waiver um, and the assessor decided to sue the board what would happen to the status of the petition and the responsibility of the taxes in the interim if there is any lawsuit madam chair and supervisor christie i think that in terms of the taxes it's my understanding that most ta most challenges to taxes um, the taxes have to be paid before uh, or during the in order to continue litigation Un under that posture I, again i don't know whether a, a court or whether the statutes specifically address if the board were to have granted the waiver um, and the and the and the assessor were to bring a lawsuit <coughs> to which I assume the taxpayer would be a party as a defendant, I, I just I don't know whether the the courts would require the taxes to be paid in the interim. In that, so in, in reality, the Rialto Theater folks are damned if they do, damned if they don't, because they're going to have to be responsible for the payment, even if we, as a board, grant the uh, uh, the waiver. Uh, because of the anticipated lawsuit from the assessor. Well, Madam Chair and Supervisor Christie, I think in general a taxpayer is going to be required to pay taxes during the pendency of a challenge. That's just a, a fairly um, broad principle across Title 42. And if we don't grant the waiver, then they're going to be responsible for the taxes. Madam Chair and Supervisor Christie, unless there's some other avenue taken to uh, successfully challenge the exemption determination can they stay can they stay this or not madam chair I don't in terms of paying the taxes while this is all pending mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know whether the error correction statutes require the taxes to be paid um, during the pendency of a challenge in general that's the case with title 42 if you're if you're challenging a determination whether whether it's valuation or exemption taxes generally have to be paid during the pendency of a challenge and then can be refunded at the end if you win thank you and I think Supervisor Miller you had a question um, madam chair um, Rialto theater has been around a long time um, have they had exemptions in the past and what happened did this just change hands a few years ago or what, what why did this suddenly become an issue if it's my understanding and perhaps the gentleman who spoke can um, correct me if I'm wrong uh, it, there were some new um, hires at the co uh, county assessor's office who made this determination um, so so they changed the exemption status is that am I correct you might yes, again, my <coughs> council for the Rialto theater uh, Supervisor Miller, the foundation of 501c3 acquired the property in June of 2015. Prior to that time, we had received an exemption consistently since uh, the existing foundation took over in 2004 for person, ad valorem personal property taxes, which have the same standard as exemptions for real property taxes. As, as um, Chair Bronson correctly stated, when we have submitted the documents we were confronted with a, a change of personnel at the assessor's office and uh, again I have I'm sure everybody's sick of me filing papers with them including your board chair and your council or your board clerk but I keep providing these documents showing to the assessors saying we're a 501 c3 and under the statute that uh, Council just referred to so long as we are a 501 c3 we don't have to be determined to be exempt or not if we're a 501 c3 you folks have the ability to determine whether we're entitled to a an exemption or not the or, or a waiver of the taxes you don't have to right, determine we're exempt yeah. so that's right a waiver and the only thing you need to find is that we're a 501 c3 and I don't think that's ever been disputed the other thing I'd mention and you have very able counsel but under the air correction statute if you declined our remedy we would indeed have to pay the taxes roughly forty thousand dollars and then proceed with litigation my understanding of the statute and again you have able counsel that can look at that if you determined not to assess the taxes against us 
Our belief is that we would not have to pay. The statute just says the Board of Supervisors, pursuant to subsection B, has granted the rebate and no taxes are due. So I don't, our interpretation, again, is that we would not have to pay in that instance. And the other issue, as I often say to courts who I appear before, I sure hope people don't appeal this kind of stuff. So you gotta, you gotta look at whether the assessor's gonna initiate litigation, but this is, again, as I said before, not something that we think reasonable people disagree with. The Rialto's had an exemption for years, so I've taken too much of your time, but if I can mm -hmm. answer any questions, I'm happy to do so. Um, so what happens, let's just say the board today decides to grant the waiver, but what happens next year? Are you right back at square one? I, I'm, not I, I'm not sure because we plan on the first Monday of this month, shortly, to file our exemption application with the county assessor um, for 2018 taxes. And based upon the fact that we're a 501c3 and this is a theater, we would hope that some of the procedural issues raised by the assessor in the past would not be raised. So our hope is that uh, by timely filing in January the documents with the assessor that there won't be a dispute. So that's his, his, his uh, dispute is that it wasn't timely, so he doesn't want to grant the... Well, he has taken that position. We've provided your counsel with the documents we filed with the Board of Supervisors showing that we've timely filed with you. But he has also objected, saying you don't own the theater and you're not using it for an exempt purpose, which are the... The, the facts that are very difficult for any of us to wrap our heads around since we've always been exempt always in the past. And, and always used, used it for it the theatrical, theatrical and artistic music. and dance provisions that are provided by the state legislature. So my hope is that if we timely file with the assessor the application next Monday, that we won't have to bother you in 2018 and the assessor will will see that just like we've always been we're entitled to the exemption going forward I hope I'm not being so, overly optimistic but that's our hope yeah so so he says you didn't file for the exemption in a timely manner are you saying you didn't file in a timely it, manner but under a provision a of the statute we did not timely file with the assessor with the assessor but under B we did the timely file, file with the board, the board. both okay. for 16 and 17 and what's so difficult for us is you got something from the assessor on the 18th of December saying they never filed and they wouldn't even if they had filed uh, been entitled to an exemption and that's where the lack of communication here is again it's it's difficult for any of us to understand we do own the theater we've provided them the deed we are a 501c3 we've provided that the lobby and the theater are the same operation if any of you were you couldn't operate the theater without, without the lobby. lobby we'd be we wouldn't have the ability to do that that's ingress egress public restrooms fire escapes all that kind of stuff so there's no doubt, I don't think, there never has been a doubt. If you're part of the 125,000 people that came through the theater last year, you know it's one building, it's owned by one entity, it's a 501c3. So again, thank you for wrestling with this. I know you have many issues to deal with, but it's quite important for our employees and our theater. So uh, if there's any other questions, uh, or if I can work with Mr. Flagg, as I've done very well in the last couple of weeks, I'm, I'm ready to do so. But okay. we appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Madam Chair. Supervisor Christie. I'd like to make a motion that the board uh, grant the petition for well, a waiver. Okay, you know, you're, there's two on. petitions. There's A and B. All right. I would like to make a motion that the board grant the waiver as requested under items A and B uh, as a waiver of real property taxes. On item number 11. Yes. We okay. I haven't called that item yet. Let me just move to that item. Then you can make your motion. Thank you. Go ahead. I'd like to make the motion that the Board of Supervisors, under item 11 on the agenda, sections A and B, grant the waiver of real property as requested by the Rialto Theater Foundation for tax year 2016. 
Is there a second? Madam Chair, don't we first need to do the reconsideration vote? Um, yes. Yes. It's a request for reconsideration. And so you're, you actually, you I have can't. have to do it a third time. You can, no, you can't. Because you, can't, you, voted, you voted no. You voted I'm, no. Thank you, pardon me. Okay. I, I will move for reconsideration. Is there a second? Second. Motion Madam and Chair. A, thank you, Supervisor Miller. For correcting me, I forgot. Thank you. There's a motion for reconsideration. Supervisor Elias. Uh, I I don't really have a problem reconsidering this item, but it's complicated, and, and there's a number of different sides. There's a lot of paper that's been passed back and forth between everybody. Uh, the foundation's lawyer is here today, leading the discussion. Seems a little strange to me, but that's okay. Um, but I think we need to have a county attorney present. Uh, who's better versed in this issue and this issue specifically. Um, so I'd, I'd like to do a reconsideration, but I'd like us to, to meet and try and work some of this stuff out because frankly, I think there's ways to work this out between now and then uh, that'll work for everybody. And so we don't have to worry about it coming back on appeal or any of those kind of things. It's, I think as a practical matter, it, it, I understand the argument that you're making and I, I don't disagree with it but I think we ought to take some time and, and let's have some more discussion so that the board feels more comfortable because I gotta tell you folks, this is opening a can of worms that has, has been before well, this board for a long, long time and, and so. Well, it's like conflicting statutes or statutes that, are, that lack clarity because the board appear, appears to have authority, right. but the assessor is essentially saying, declining that we have that authority so there is um, a, a dichotomy there, but there is a motion on the floor for reconsideration. That just gets us to the fact where we can talk about these right. two items. There's a motion on the floor to reconsider. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. We will reconsider. Supervisor, Supervisor, well, um, go ahead, Supervisor Elias. Um, as far as a resolution to the matter and the question of waiving those real property taxes today, I'd like to continue that item until our second meet in February, our second meeting in February, excuse me, I misspoke. Uh, continue it and with direction to do what? Uh, I'd like to have these sites meet together with uh, our county attorneys and... Um, with the assessor? And the assessors as well too. Yes, I think that's absolutely critical. So they can find out and, and we can witness what's going on firsthand from the whole deal, okay? So we uh, typically if the county attorney thinks that there needs to be an executive session before we hear the final resolution of this I, I think that would probably be appropriate as well yeah I mean, we don't need it now till we have more right. of, yeah supervisor Valadez madam chair I certainly don't have an objection to the motion the only question that I did have was on these matters uh, is the county attorney uh, representing the assessor or is it uh, an outside counsel is representing the, uh, the assessor Madam Chair and Supervisor Valadez, on this matter, the county attorney's office does not represent the assessor, um, and you know, it, it may be a matter on which we'd have a conflict in that representation, in which case the assessor could be represented by outside counsel if necessary. So would it be more appropriate, that instead of directing that the county attorney be present, that the outside counsel for the assessor be present? Well, we because he'll be representing us. Madam Chair and Supervisor Valadez, as I understand the request, probably we would be present on behalf of the county and if the assessor is present and needs counsel there then then we can arrange to have outside counsel present for the assessor um, madam chair um, mr. flag that doesn't represent a conflict correct M madam chair and supervisor valid as if the assessor has outside counsel there should be no conflict okay. on this matter okay Thank you. we got everything clarified so there's it. there's a motion to continue to second meeting in February was that correct mm -hmm. okay Maybe. motion go ahead supervisor Maybe. Christie um, I understand uh, Supervisor Elias' uh, motion. I think it has good sense. My only thought on this whole process is it appears that there's going to be some sort of a showdown between the board and the assessor at some point. This is as good a case as any to uh, test it and to uh, d resolve it. Um, and that's why I made my original uh, inappropriate motion to go ahead and, and waive the petition. However, um, my question would be to the Rialto folks. I don't know if I can address the, the question to them. The Rialto? Rialto, sorry. Yeah, Rialto. No, Rialto is, is a racetrack. Oh, no. thank you. Um, uh, you can try. We'll see if it's appropriate. What's the question? Would you be 
accept, uh, accepting that uh, delay for uh, well, discussion with the assessors? He prefer, I suppose, he'd rather not see a delay, but I'm not sure he's got much of a choice. <laughs> I enjoy coming to visit with you folks. <laughs> We are happy to work with anybody. I do believe if you look at the substance. You need to title, get yourself up there to the microphone yeah. if you're going to continue to speak, sir. Thank you. Again, Michael McGrath, counsel for the Rialto Theater. And uh, I'm more than happy to work with the county attorney with whom I've worked e easily on this stuff. I can't get anybody at the assessor's office that really wants to speak to me about these issues. So we're happy to do it, though I would suggest to you that if anybody looks at the substantive objections, are we a 501c3 and is it a theater, you have the power and if you put me out of my misery by granting the exemption, we don't have to lo waste a lot of resources. But I understand for taking time also. So our, our request is that you grant our exemption and should you choose to, to continue this matter, we'll be happy to cooperatively work and constructively work for the right resolution. Thank, Thank you. you. Supervisor Thank you. Miller. Um, the Board of Supervisors doesn't have the authority to grant the exemption. We just have a authority, authority to waive. To waive. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's confusing and we've got con potentially conflicting statutes uh, or at least differing, differing legal interpretations of those statutes. And this, again, is, is a conundrum we find ourselves often in. You know, we've had it with the county attorney where we have row officers who we're the ones who write the checks, we're the ones that give the money to operate their uh, individual departments, but they, in some instances, uh, and against what we would consider, we as a board would consider appropriate policies, uh, may not act, in, at least in the board's view, in the taxpayer's best interest. Um, so, but that, this is the nature of counties with the independent row officers, and, and one, you know, these are, these are issues we face all the time with, with the row officers who um, uh, don't come under our direct supervision. Okay, so Madam there Chair? is supervisor. I, I, I think uh, taking a more diplomatic kind of approach to this is probably what's good. I, I've never heard a sitting supervisor say that we should uh, set on course that puts us in direct uh, conflict with the role. Well, officer. it doesn't serve the taxpayer. <laughs> well, and, and that's why I'm saying I, I'm kind of surprised to hear Supervisor Christie say that. It seemed almost like a threat. And, and it seems like uh, not a prudent course of action. Thank you, Supervisor Elias. If there's no further discussion, there is a motion on the floor. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. And just so item 11, uh, we have concluded. And now we move on to human resources, item 12. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board? Well, let's move item, if nobody has a problem with, with combining item 12 and 13, I'll move those two items. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to item 14, this is unfinished business with Katherine Kellner. Since we haven't brought outside counsel on yet, I'll move to continue this item to um, our next meeting, uh, provided we have outside counsel on board and he's reviewed this expenditure. Second. Madam Chair. Supervisor Valadez. Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Flagg, will uh, the, this delay cause any uh, hardship on the county attorney's office? Madam Chair, Supervisor Valadez, I, um, I don't think so of this particular item. Is there any other questions? Any objections? Motion carries. Moving on to Fair Horse Racing Meet 2016. This is um, in a, uh, sets the calendar um, and it's subject to final approval by the Arizona Department of Racing. I'll move the item. Second. Motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, we're moving on to item 16 and 17. 
we've dealt with these items before. I'll move those two items. Second. Motion and a second. Supervisor Miller, I assume you object? I object, yes. Any further objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Item 18 requires unanimous approval. What's the pleasure of the board? Madam Chair, I... Oh, sorry. Madam Chair, I'd move item 18. Second. Motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. We're now under transportation. Uh, items 19 and 20. I'll move the items. Second. Motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. We now move on to hearings. These are hearings, franchise, license, permits. Uh, item 21 is a liquor license. Item 22 is fire work permit. I'll move those items. All right, wait, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address us on these items at this time? If not, I'll move to close public Madam hearing Chair. and approve the items. Supervisor, uh, and Supervisor Miller, I assume you're seconding? Yeah, Supervisor Elias. Again, I'm concerned about the fireworks permit. Right. It has been very dry. We've had only had a little bit of rain in the middle of December, and before that, it hadn't rained since September. Um, I'd at least like to check in with uh, any fire district to see if they have uh, any objections to this fireworks display. Okay. Before they before they get a permit. Okay. Is that I'll, I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay. Motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none. Motion carries. Moving on to item resources. Uh, human resources. This is a hearing. Ordinance 2018-1. It is a hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address us on this item at this time? If not, I move to close the hearing and approve the ordinance 2018-1 and item 23. Second. Motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to item 24, this is a hearing. P17RZ00006, Wong Family LP, West Sumter Drive rezoning. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address us um, on this item at this time in opposition? In opposition. If not, what's the pleasure of the board? Supervisor Miller. Madam Chair, I move, <coughs> excuse me. I move to close the public hearing and approve uh, rezoning P17RZ00006, Wong Family, West Sumter rezoning, uh, subject to standard and special conditions as recommended by Planning and Zoning Commission, as well as standard and special conditions as recommended by staff. Second. second. So there's a motion and a second, and you close the public hearing, right? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Moving on to item 25, P17RZ00008, Landmark Title Trust, 7792T, South Nogales Highway Rezoning. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address us in opposition to this item at this time? If not, I'm going to move we close the public hearing and approve subject to standard and special conditions as recommended by both the commission and the staff. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any objection? Hearing none, motion carries. That brings us to the addendum. Item one, uh, employment of outside counsel for racketeering funds review. Uh, Mr. Huckleberry, you put this item on the board. We had initially instructed you to uh, contact the same attorney Maricopa County was using for outside review, uh, and that was Artie Eves. Have you been in discussion with Mr. Eves? Yes, Madam Chair, and I think I've sent the board a communication with regard to uh, asking Mr. Eves about his plan and, and then his fee schedule. Talked to them on Friday, and uh, he had a medical appointment today just to follow up on, uh, sounds like, outpatient surgery. And um, I would suggest that, obviously, uh, if the board continues to want to employ him, that uh, I would give him a notice to come to the next board meeting on the 16th and at that time probably at the same time if he wants to respond in writing prior to that he can and then the board can decide at that point uh, specifically how to contract with Mr. Eves. Okay. Um, 
so we'll move this then ask that uh, his employment uh, potential com employment contract be put on the uh, 16th agenda for approval and then have him present to um, answer any questions is there any objection from board members okay and then I think that we received I had at the previous meeting our last meeting uh, in 2017 uh, I had uh, prior to the meeting asked uh, the county attorney if the uh, if she would uh, consider the use of RICO funds to pay legal fees for the outside counsel. She declined that. So uh, I would then, in, in, as a corollary to this item, uh, direct the county uh, administrator. Uh, well, I, I think we need to get clarification from the state attorney general as to whether or not RICO funds, uh, looking at the new statute, whether the new statute allows for the use of RICO funds to pay for legal fees for outside counsel. And I would direct that we ask for a, an opinion of the attorney general. And if in the, um, the resulting opinion is negative that RICO funds cannot be used for that purpose, then I would ask that the um, Attorney General uh, provide the specificity as to which part of the statute disallows the use of RICO funds and would ask that his opinion include that. And then I would further direct um, our staff and the county administrator uh, to get seek clarification from the state legislature as to their intent when they amended this statute. And I'll make, uh, I'll make that um, as by direction because, oh, we've got action in here. So I'll make that by, uh, in form of a motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Objections? Hearing none, motion carries. Madam Chair. Supervisor Elias. I would move the remainder of the addendum unless somebody wants to split it up. Um, number two. Number two, okay. Yep. Um, let's move. So you're going to move items three, four, and five, Supervisor Elias. Sure. I'll second. Any objections? Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, item three. I'll move the I or item two. I'll move the item in second. resolution 2018-1. I object. Uh, any further objections? Hearing none. Motion carries. And unbelievably, it's not even 1030, and we have concluded our meeting today. Happy New Year to everybody. We will see you on the 16th. We stand adjourned unless there are objections.